Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers in week seven. Niners coming off a rough loss at Atlanta, 28 to 14. The Chiefs coming off of a tough loss themselves, 24 to 20 against the Bills. Look, the good news for the Chiefs, finally getting healthier. The cavalry is coming, so to speak. Trent McDuffie, their first round corner, almost played against the Bills. One would expect him to play against the 49ers. Willie Gay, his suspension is done. Those four games behind him now. He will be back against the 49ers and just in time for a run attack that is a major, major problem for the Chiefs. Look, the Bills ran the ball really well against you. They went heavy personnel. The Raiders did the same thing. Well, guess what the 49ers want to do? They want to run the ball against you, and they are going to do it if the Chiefs don't make some adjustments, and that's where the preview is going to start here. Look, the 49ers are not a team that's high octane. They're not going to throw the ball over the yard. That's not what they do. It's not the way they want to play, but the Niners are a legitimate force on the ground. They know how to run the ball. They know how to get chunk yardage out of it. When you look at the Niners statistically this year, Jeff Wilson, 400 yards on the ground, 4.9 yards a carry. He can get the job done. He's also an explosive runner time. He's had four big runs. The Niners, just like the Chiefs, shockingly enough, averaging 4.4 yards an attempt. Debo, not run a ton. He's only getting about four carries a game. He's at 23 carries through six, uh, six tilts this year. So it's really, it's going to be about Jeff Wilson. It's going to be about shutting him down. He's going to be the main back. He's going to get the lion's share of the carries in this game. When you look at the receivers, it's a three-headed monster. It's Debo Samuel, and it's Brandon Ayuk on the outside. It's George Kittle at tight end. So far, Kittle coming back from injury at his best game against Atlanta, one for over 80 yards. He's only got 182 yards through four games. Obviously, also a force in the, in the run game as well. He's like having a sixth offensive lineman. And when they have Kyle Juszczyk, the fullback out there, who is the best fullback in the NFL for my money, that is heavy personnel. Okay, that is that is basically having seven offensive linemen out there. The Chiefs are going to be in base a lot this week. They better come with it. If they don't, they're going to get run over at the point of attack. Debo is by far, in my opinion, the scariest weapon on the team. 345 receiving yards. He can make a play, not only catching the ball, but running you over afterwards. He is a big physical receiver. The Chiefs are going to have to tackle. They're going to have to tackle better than they have the last couple of weeks. That has to be a point of emphasis in this game, or they will have issues. Now, when the Chiefs have the ball, it's an interesting situation here. The problem for the Niners is not talent on defense. They've got talent for days. The problem is injuries. Bosa, don't know if he's going to play. Armstead, don't know if he's going to play. Kinlaw's on IR. He is not going to play. That's three-fourths of your starting defensive line, and Bosa is a menace. Before he got hurt, at six sacks on the year. Can he play this week? We don't know. If he does play with that groin injury, is he healthy? Impossible to say. Armstead, he's missed three of the last four games. Can he go this week? We're going to find out. But that those are two all-pro-level players. Now, the linebackers are great. Dre Greenlaw and Fred Warner, as good as it gets, a phenomenal combination. That, now, they're not pass rushers by any means, only a half sack between the two. You're not going to see a lot of blitzing, but they can cover. Kelsey, it's going to be interesting to watch that matchup, okay? We saw it, of course, in the Super Bowl. Kelsey had a decent game in that, that night. But Greenlaw and Warner, you can make an argument, the best linebacking combination in the NFL. You also watch out for Hafunga at safety. Hafunga is a really, really good player. Got dinged up against Atlanta, came back, looks to be okay. One of the better safeties in the league, only a second-year guy. Somebody who really needs to be watched. Now, Charvarius Ward, familiar face. He might not play in this game. Hurt his groin in the first half against Atlanta, was not able to return. Emmanuel Mosley, out for the year of the torn ACL. So the Niners might be playing backup corners across the board. We will see how it plays out. Jimmy Ward, star safety. He's dealing with a broken hand, just had surgery on. Unclear if he'll play. If he plays, he's going to have a club on his hand. If you're the Chiefs offensively, because of all the injuries, you should be able to have a decent day here. This should not be a game where your offense is overwhelmed. Now, the Niners are very, very good schematically, very well coached, and they might have a couple of those guys back. We'll see, but this is a beat-up group. It's a group that just gave up 28 to Atlanta. So it's a tough spot. It's a tough spot for the Niners. You also wonder, will they – if guys are on the fence for playing, do they rest them this week? The, the Rams coming up the following week, a much more important game for the Niners, and then a bye week. So we'll see. We'll see how things shake out. But the Niners, the walking wounded right now, they are beat up. 
when the Chiefs are on defense, one other note to make, look, it's unclear who's going to be blocking for the Niners. Trent Williams has not played in recent weeks, had a high ankle sprain. We will see Kyle Shanahan said in his presser on Sunday there's a chance he could play. We'll watch that throughout the week, see if Williams can return to practice. And then Mike McGlinchey, he left and did not return in yesterday's game with a calf injury. So a lot to a lot to watch this week on the injury reports. The Chiefs getting healthier, the Niners not. Much more uh, of an injury issue on the side of the Niners. But listen, make no mistake, this should be a really good football game. The Niners are very well coached. They're going to come out, and they're going to want blood after the Super Bowl years ago. Still a lot of players on that team. And so we saw how the Chiefs played when they played the, the Buccaneers, right? They wanted to come out. They wanted to prove a point. I'm sure we'll see something similar with the Niners. The question is just, do the injuries hold them back? Uh, the Chiefs, by the way, if you're into this sort of thing, a three-point favorite at most books. They were one-and-a-half-point favorites, uh, favorites on the look-ahead line. It jumped to two-and-a-half. Now it's up to three. I think that's mostly a reflection of the injuries for San Francisco. But the game is in Levi Stadium. It is not going to be easy. Of course, after this, the Chiefs have a bye week, and then they come out, and their schedule gets a lot easier. Tennessee and Jacksonville at home, right out of the bye. Then they go play the Chargers, a tough game. Then they get the Rams at home. The Rams have been a mess all year long. My keys to the game here, the Chiefs have to be able to curtail the run to some extent. You're never going to totally shut it down with the Niners. You have to curtail it. And offensively, you've got to be able to throw the ball here. Look, the Niners are beat up up front. They're missing their corners on the outside, or at least missing one, maybe missing both with, with Ward, depending upon his groin injury. The Chiefs should be able to throw the ball in this game. This should not be an overwhelmingly difficult game with all the injuries. If the Niners were healthy, you might even pick the Niners to win the game based on the matchups. They're just not healthy. The Niners right now are just so beat up that I think if you're Kansas City, you feel like, look, stop the run to the best of your ability. Getting Willie Gabe back is going to really help in that regard. And then throw the ball, get ahead of the sticks, Try to get a lead where the Niners can't just run the ball and it turns into Garoppolo and Mahomes. That happens, obviously, advances Kansas City. So, look, overall, I think if you're Kansas City, you feel like this is a winnable game, even though it's a road game against what I think is a top-five team when they're healthy. They're, you're just catching them at the right time with all the injuries. If the Chiefs win, they get the 5-2. and two. And, again, you look down the stretch. After their bye, the 10 games after their bye, the only two games the Chiefs may not be favored in are the Chargers and Bengals on the road. And right now, if they play those games, they would be favored. If you're the Chiefs, you could go on quite a run here between now and the end of the season if your health holds up and you play the capability. It starts in San Francisco with a Niners team that's very talented but very hurt and a Chiefs team that's trying to prove a point after losing to Buffalo. Can they get back on the horse and get the 5-2 and two, or do they fall and go to 4-3 and three, and all of a sudden you start looking at it and now it's just a fight for the division? The Chiefs, the 49ers, and Santa Clara in an important game before the Chiefs get their bye in week eight.